Stockport Proud, uh, Owen represents to me a critical voice in these desperate times. He is someone who will provoke, agitate and inspire, but perhaps most importantly, he'll tell it how it is. Ladies and gentlemen, Owen Jones. Um, thanks so much for that, Kezia. It's great to be, it's a privilege to be among so many dedicated activists, many of you de de devoting much of your life to the struggle for justice. Always throws people a bit when I start speaking because some wonder who the cocky 12-year-old who looks like he's walked off the set of Home Alone 1 is. Uh, in fact, sometimes when I go and tell you, people ask why, I, why I'm not doing my paper round. But I've, I've taken the morning off the paper round to talk to you today. Uh, I remember well, actually, the first demonstration I was taken on by my parents was the demonstration against the poll tax in Glasgow in 1990. And I remember this because this remains... My proudest political moment, I started a chant, I didn't know what I was chanting, uh, but out of pity, because I started chanting something on a little placard I was given, people started chanting it around me, and someone said, you're wee Ben, and I started a chant, and I still haven't topped that as, as a political contribution to our movement. But what I want to talk about today, and I want to hear from you as well, because I always find when I come to events like this that I come here to learn as much as to, to talk, but what I'm going to talk about is really what we're up against, and it is a tough struggle indeed that we face. And the worse that poverty gets, the more we see demonization of people living in poverty. Now that's not new and it owes much to what happened in the 1980s, that legacy which we're still suffering from. Now, you can say what you want about Margaret Thatcher, no really, say what you want, but <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't mince her words. And she said this in the late 70s, just as she came to power. Nowadays, there really is no primary poverty left in this country. In Western countries, we are left with problems which aren't poverty. All right, there may be poverty because they don't know how to spend their earnings. They don't know how to budget. But you are left with the really hard, fundamental character personality defect. Now that, if anything, summed up the very heart, if you call it that, of Thatcherism. That attitude towards issues like unemployment and poverty, that they weren't social problems to be addressed, but they were individual failings, that people had to pull themselves up by their bootstraps, whether or not they had boots in the first place. Another quote which summed it up, Norman Tebbit, one of her right-hand men, and of course, as people were thrown on the scrap heap of unemployment lines soared, as because of those slash and burn Thatcherite policies, Norman Tebbit said, back in the 30s, my dad got on his bike and he looked for work. And that became almost a national cliche, get on your bike. And it's that attitude, that Thatcherite approach to poverty and unemployment that is for you to sort out, that if people are in poverty or unemployed, it's because they're lazy or work shy or feckless. And tragically, that became the common sense for politicians and journalists alike. Now, what we see today, for example, are uh, the most extreme and unrepresentative uh, examples of benefit fraud which are passed off as though they are the tip of the iceberg. This idea of people with 50 kids living in mansions made out of widescreen television sets. The most extreme examples hunted out by the tabloid, uh, tabloid press. Now we know benefit fraud exists. According to the government's own figures, it is less than 1% of total welfare spending. But you'd never think that, picking up the average tabloid or flicking on the TV or listening to a politician's speech. You would think that anyone on benefits is milking the system. Just give you an example of some of this, uh, these portrayals. Uh, the Sunday Times, our paper, a record, apparently, a few months ago, they had this uh, headline, End of Something for Nothing Culture. It was accompanied with a photo of the feckless Gallagher brothers from Shameless, as though somehow they were real life. And it had, it talked about people on benefits, and it quoted... Uh, a Whitehall official who said, if we want them to tap dance, they will tap dance. I'll give you another example, Rod Liddell, to people I'm sure aware of Rod Liddell, he dresses up the boorish rants of a pub bore as journalism, but he said uh, his New Year's resolution was to become disabled. He said perhaps with a newly invented illness like fibromyalgia, so he could claim benefits. Now these are the sorts of portrayals and attacks that you see by the media, demonising people living in poverty and who are disabled in order then to justify the attacks on them. And the reality is all but airbrushed out of existence. The reality of people's lives is almost completely erased. 
And that is something which both journalists and politicians often are responsible for. So I want to talk a bit about the reality. Now, we've been told since the beginning of this crisis that we are all in this together. It's a statement that's, lit, that's veered from the ludicrous, the offensive, ever since it was first said. And the reality is, it remains boom time for the people at the top. Now, each year, the Sunday Times do a rich list. It looks at the top 1,000 richest people in Britain. Last year, their wealth went up by nearly a fifth. The year before that, it went up by 30%. It's the biggest jump ever recorded in the history of the rich list. And of course, the top 1% have just been handed a nice tax cut by this government itself, of course, a government of millionaires. And yet at the same time, it is a serious, very serious crisis for working people. Living standards for the average Briton are declining at their fastest rate since my gran was born in the early 1920s.